Hello everybody and welcome into the Fast Track Sim Racing Cup Series live from No Limits, Texas. Got a good one in store for you here tonight. Thank you all so much for tuning in. You are watching Austin Green on Ghost Racing Network. Qualifying just getting wrapped up, drivers getting gritted up, and we are getting this thing ready to get going. So with that, let's get right down trackside and get into your starting grid here. Take the pole tonight. Dynamic Auto Sports' own Austin Fitzgerald. Look to see if he can add on his second one of the season. Potentially with a good run here tonight at Texas. Angel Raz will roll off second. One of the rookies was able to capture his first win of the season last week at Martinsville. So again, another driver that's kind of on the hot seat right now. Looking to see if he can build off that momentum. Jake Hickson will start back in third behind his teammate. Tyler Marble in fourth on the outside for Team Marble iRacing. Michael Mueller, Quentin Clark, two rookies and two teammates making up row number three. It's going to be Alan Pajari back in seventh with Jeff Marble in eighth. Greg Bartlett, great qualifying effort for that 77 car. He will roll off ninth. And Rachel Hunt making her first start of the season. She will roll off tenth here tonight. Jacob Musso for the Musso Speed Shop. A great run for him as well. Last week he will roll off eleventh here tonight. On the outside, Brandon Saylor, he will start in 12th. Moving on back to row number 7. It's going to be Ty Eopolito and Danny Gutierrez. Jeff Shutt back in the 15th position with Roger Shelton and the 42 car to his outside in 16th. Scott Glasso, 17th. Troy Baker in 18th. Mark Sabak and Tracy Powers rounding out your top 20. Wester Jr. Kyle Oakley start in row 11. Brian Conklin, Thomas O'Hara in row number 12. Jared Bundy and Andrew Russo row 13. Todd Shiro, Ryan Haynes in row 14. Anthony Hanley, 29th. And the rookie, Kenneth Bartholomew, rounding out your top 30. Cody Matthews starts 31st. Glenn Grigsby in 32nd. Jeffrey Souza, 33rd. No excuses racing. Has Johnny McCulchuk on the outside of row, excuse me, row 17. He'll roll off 34th. Ryan Shiro in 35th. Matthew Gearinger, 36th. And it's Christopher Hall rounding out your 37 car field here tonight. Looking at your race info real quick, it is the Texas 200 here for the Fast Track Sim Racing Cup Series. Total distance here tonight, 134 laps. Everybody does have 100% fuel, four sets of tires, no fast repairs. Open setups as always, and three green-white checkers if we need them. Track length, 1.5 miles, 117 degrees starting track temp. Clear skies, 81 degrees outside, 12-mile-an-hour winds, and a beautiful day for a race. And all right, here we go. No Limits, Texas, one of the fastest tracks, mile and a half at least, and we're ready to go racing. Green flag is in the air. Here we go at Texas. Lap one complete, but coming to the checker there, it was a almost a tiebreaker, if you will. Only the first lap, though, so nothing important there except the fact that Ange Moraz may have a chance to take the lead here from Austin Fitzgerald off of turn number two. Nothing doing there. They will stay side by side. It looked like we had a couple guys maybe just kiss the wall a couple rows back. I think that was right around Jay Kicks and Tyler Marble. Maybe Quentin Clark as well, just in front of them. But, man, the two leaders are going at it right now. You saw Mraz right there through three and four. I mean, he laid it on the door of Austin Fitzgerald. Now, of course, one of the things that makes Texas what it is is the way this track runs and the newer configuration versus what it used to be where turn one and two was the exact same setup as three and four. So well over 200 miles per hour and just about flat out around the entire track. Not anymore. With this new setup that's well well over a couple, just about a couple handfuls of years old now, I believe. Uh, nonetheless, the point is with the setup that these guys are currently on now, turn one and two much different than turn three and four. Less banking, but more of a sweeping kind of, we'll call it a little bit broader radius kind of turn, whereas turn three and four is a little bit tighter, feels a little bit more narrow, but is a lot faster, and there is more banking as well. So that's going to definitely determine a lot, and these guys had to make their cars a little bit, or set them up rather, a little bit different than what we'd see at a normal mile and a half. But Texas is a ton of fun. There's multiple grooves you can make work here, especially in turn one and two. And we keep talking about it. How about giving you a little bit of an idea of exactly what it looks like? Here's the onboard shot for Austin Fitzgerald. You see there almost 190 miles an hour as he gets to turn number one. 
Off the throttle, he's choosing to wrap the white line on the bottom of the racetrack, as is Andrew Mraz. And again, that's the place to be if you're conserving tire, but if you're staying racy, you can try to make that outside work. Over here in three and four, a little bit different. You actually hear them, they do have to lift out a little bit, at least if you're trying to save tire. That could be certainly a lot different if we have a late race restart. And then draft is, of course, going to be a factor throughout this race as long as you're within at least relatively close distance of the car in front of you. You're going to be able to get a little bit of extra pull speed from that car. Here we go. Quentin Clark looking for a spot here right in between Alan Pajari. Or excuse me, that was Michael Mueller rather that was looking for that spot just behind Quentin Clark. And then there is Tyler Marble in the 48 as he rockets by two by two. Danny Gutierrez, a West Hair Jr., Good to see him back in the field tonight. Already up nine positions from where he started this race at. Shows you that he clearly doesn't think that tires are going to be too much, if anything, of an issue in terms of saving here tonight. I think that's going to be a little bit of a different story, though. I mean, we know that it's 100% fuel, but I mean, it's not many racetracks that we go to. We say tires aren't going to be a problem. And in general, it looks like tonight the expected window is about 55 to 60 laps on fuel. However, tires not going to make it that far by any means. And it'll be interesting to see how the balance kind of shifts around if these cars tend to sway towards the tighter side of the looser side as this run does go on. And so with 134 laps, setting itself up to be at least a two-stopper at this point. Can't make it with just one, but if we get a couple cautions here at any point, it could certainly alter the strategy to either one or potentially none based on when those cautions do come out. Little three wide action just for a moment further back between Tracy Powers, Marks of Bach. And now that translates a row back here. The 98 of Anthony Handley. Right now he's up three from where he started. The 88 of Russo takes that spot as it's the 18 of Troy Baker. Another one of the rookies that is on his inside. Ryan Shiro just behind both of them. 99 looking to the inside. Michael Mueller trying to set up a move on another one of the rookies, Jake Hickson. Hickson, of course, with a ton of speed at Las Vegas. One of the mile and a half set. Well, while not similar to Texas, still a mile and a half. Same length just about. And that's probably the only notes that they've really got from here. Last season had a pretty good race at Texas in terms of Ford Dynamic Auto Sports, the team. But Jake Hickson wasn't around then, so this is still all new to him. Trying to figure some things out, but doing a good job so far, at least here in the early going. Again, he has already set himself in a good spot via qualifying effort and as for race pace hasn't lost much and you almost wonder if he's saving tire and it's only fitting that two guys in front of him are his two veteran teammates and Alan Pajari and Austin Fitzgerald and so Andrew Mraz the only separation from right now making Dynamic Autosports sit 1-2-3 here at Texas talked about one of the new drivers that we've got in the field here tonight and that is Rachel Hunt She's making her first start of the season and coming out with a bang, too, in terms of the qualifying effort. Top 10, and right now, still running well within the top 10. Currently in ninth, falls back to 10th as Bartlett takes a look low. Now, West Herd Jr. will go around as well. I'm telling you, coming into this series as a rookie, from what we've seen, it's, it's definitely a challenge, but we've seen so many rookies overcome that challenge so quickly. And early going, oh, man, Bartlett. Oh, man, him and West Herd Jr. cut together. That was a really, really close call. They both save it. Bartlett's going to lose that duel. But finishing off the note here on Rachel Hunt. Again, from what we know about, I don't believe she's on a team right now. So she'll have some learning to do, but brought a fast setup here to start the race. And we'll see how good her car is on the long run. And if she can maybe cap off her first start with her first top 10 as well to see how things pan out. Back up front, Andrew Mraz still sitting in the lead. Has the gap at about half a second over Alan Pajari, and then just behind Pajari, Fitzgerald about another half a second or so behind his teammate, Jake Hickson following close suit in fourth. And I think what you're seeing here is just kind of that draft effect. Pajari's able to really hang with the 97 down the straights, and so he doesn't have to be necessarily exactly as good in the corner. He just has to be close. And as long as he does, that draft holds him at bay, at least for now. However, as tires continue to fade, that could certainly change some things up. Wester Jr. is still looking on the outside right now. It's working pretty good, at least for the moment, as he's able to get a little bit more momentum, more momentum rather, down the straightaway as they exit turn two. But as they get into turn three, he's got that spot and will go all the way back down to the bottom of the racetrack. 
And the fact that that car couldn't quite all hug the bottom all the way right there definitely makes you a little worried as that 12 burning his stuff up here a little bit earlier than he would have expected to. The onboard ride there for Danny Gutierrez. As he looks out back, this time he does get clear with a little bit of a slide job type move on Wes Hearn Jr. Wes is going to try a crossover, but there's nothing doing there, so he'll have to set up where he runs. As, ooh, further back. Hold on to it, Ryan Shiro. Wrecking out back, one in the wall. He saves it. That was Ryan Shiro, the first man that we saw somehow hold on to his car. But then a couple spots even behind that, it was actually Ryan Haynes who ended up hitting the outside wall, and he's got some front damage there as well. And I wonder if that was maybe from another car. There was some significant contact down the back straightaway there for Ryan Haynes with a couple of different things. And here you go, just Troy Baker. Uh, well, it's it's actually when Ryan Shiro comes back up the track trying to save it. They had a cluster to deal with amongst themselves here just a little bit further up, and that's the one that we're going to try to go to right here. Watch Ryan Shiro. Does he just get loose? Yeah, he does. That 20 starting to slip up the track a little bit. Oh, well, maybe not, actually. He definitely gets some help. I was trying to figure out if the 20 looked like it was sideways here or if this is all just him and the 9 get together. So you see the 30 or the 96, rather, Jeffrey Sousa is trying to take the bottom. And it sure works his way out the corner. The 9 of Mark Zabak is really running him low there. You know, the 20 is naturally going to drift up a little bit as he gets into the 9. He gets out of shape. Somehow, though, he saves this. I do not know. That was a ridiculous save. But then Ryan Haynes out back. Not quite as lucky as he had to check up for Troy Baker, who was checking up for the little incident that was ahead. And he's going to run right into the back of the 18 here. Sees it, stays in the throttle, and then big checkup. Boom. There's a contact in the back and then in the front. And it's hard to say if that's... I don't know if that's going to be a night ender, but... Certainly going to end any chances that he had at a win here tonight with damage like that is getting no fast pairs here on the Fast Track Sim Racing Cup Series. So whatever damage these guys get, they got to fix the manual way. And the BMP Racing Driver is, it's like, I can't tell, is he making his way off the pits here? Is he going back down? I think he's making his way off. Interesting to see is it looks like he certainly didn't get much, really, if any of that damage fixed up. And so now as we do head all the way back to the front, the battle between first and second has closed up. Andrew Mraz still your leader, but maybe not for long because Austin Fitzgerald is there, and he looks like he wants the lead. Pajari was the man earlier who started tracking him down, but he quickly faded away as well, and I think that tells us that it is certainly a tire-saving game here early, and Fitzgerald seems to have the game, or seems to be playing the game the best, rather, right now. Looking for a run. Nothing doing down the backstretch this time. 20 laps complete, by the way, so Still, if I had to guess, I'd say probably a good maybe 20, 20 to 30 or so laps away from that first green flag stop, depending on how long you feel like your tires can go. But again, if you're stretching this into a three stop, you almost kind of ask yourself, is it really worth, you know, trying to go as far as you can in this run? Or do you maybe just try to split this thing in thirds until we get our first caution? In that case, I think you'd expect maybe somebody to first go in, I don't know, we'll call it maybe around lap. 47 46 actually rather i mean sometime around there i think you make your pit stop you start setting yourself up in at least pretty decent shape to make it a relatively even three or two stopper rather and three stints in total on fuel so i should have said it but you saw that move there by fitzgerald as he takes the lead and now his teammate jay kickson the rookie he's going to be taking a look as well good news for hickson here as it looks like he followed in the footsteps of his teammate as Raz tags the wall. They're off at two, and he saved plenty of tire, and that was exactly what he needed as he got around the 97, really without any issue right there. And so Mraz, while well, he fired off really, really good, that car seems to be fading here in a pretty big hurry as now Jeff Marble will be taking a look on the inside, potentially here about the next lap as he actually clips the grass himself right there. They do have some driver cams here tonight, as we usually do. One of those is Jeff Marble. Captain for Team Marble iRacing. Talked about how close he came last week at Martinsville. Man, it was heartbreak. Was leading with just over 20 laps to go. Led all the way down to what ended up being our final couple cautions. And then just got beat out by the rookie that he's racing now. Who's on the outside, Andrew Mraz, and the last restart that we had. So Jeff Marble certainly looking for some sweet revenge here tonight before we go off into the unknown next week at Talladega Super Speedway, which could be... Honestly, just about anybody's race 
depending on if you got the right mix of luck and talent to get the job done. But the longer these two continue to stick side by side, the more it's going to bring into the battle a couple others, including this man right here, Tyler Marble. And right now it looks like Tyler rolling on the inside, trying to follow his teammate there, Jeff Marble, provide a little bit of an arrow push down the straight if he can, but certainly nothing doing yet, so he'll continue to stay tucked in line, at least over the course of the next couple laps. As we go further back in the field, Rachel Hunt has lost back here and she's actually going to bring it to the pits here for the first time tonight so not sure if maybe she had an issue or if this is part of the strategy i mean we see that 98 in here of anthony hanley and they're not sure why he'd be down the pits because the car looks clean and again it's just it's too early at this point to be taking that first pit stop in terms of making a strategy call so yeah, again not really sure what happened to rachel hunt who had a phenomenal qualifying effort but she currently sits back in that 35th position and, well, we know what happened to Ryan Shiro. How's his teammate Todd Shiro doing, though? Down three positions, rounding at your top 30 for the moment. And I know that him and Ryan both are going to be looking for a big opportunity next week at Talladega. The two Shiro Motorsports teammates, that is, to see if they can potentially get one of them their first victory here of the season. The Fast Track Sim Racing Cup Series. But speaking of Ryan Shiro, he was another one of the guys that we had carrying an onboard camera for us here tonight. And he is out of Leicester, New York. Again, no wins yet on the season, but a couple of good finishes. He's up 11 spots in total here tonight, even after that close call that he had down the back straightaway, maybe about 10 laps or so ago. So sits in 24th. He'll be looking to break back into the top 20 well before this race is over, potentially a lot sooner than that as well. Another driver that we've seen with a couple of surprising runs on tracks that maybe we weren't expecting to have the good runs versus tracks that we were expecting to have good runs was Johnny McCulcha. One of the guys that, you know, he's talented at just about any track, but I think he excels in the mile and a half based off, you know, what we know from the season before we came in, some of the dominance that he had on some of the mile and a half, such as Kansas. And while Texas race is a lot different, of course, than Kansas, same idea in terms of mile and a half in total length and Johnny McCulchuk right now is in 25th, up nine positions where he started this race at. And he is another one of our onboard cameras that we have being carried here tonight. And then last two, but certainly not least, is, ooh, three wide. Oh, oh, man, huge hit. That was Jeffrey Souza. Oh, my goodness, the 96 is destroyed. Front end has disappeared. This was really recent. What in the world happened? I was looking down here at some of the data, and all of a sudden... We had a car slow, and Souza has tagged something in a tremendous impact here. As, uh-oh, this might have started in front of him. This may, did this start with? It started with Wes Hurd Jr. That's who it started with. You saw Jeff Shutt had to take evasive maneuvers, as did multiple, multiple other drivers. And Jeffrey Souza really just had nowhere to go. Runs square into the back of him, and then hard back into that outside wall. And that car is junk. He's going to have to take that into the pits and get as much repaired as he can, but any chance of winning this race tonight, i got to believe, just went down the drain. Watch the big checkup here. 12 has a big issue. Really shocked that didn't bring out the caution. And you got to wonder if part of it, by not bringing out the caution, is what led to that big issue right there for Jeffrey Souza. But again, not sure exactly what happened here to Wes Hurd Jr., who seemed like was having a pretty good run up to this point, and then... That's certainly not what he wanted there. The issue had already started at this point. Let's see how it happens, though. First off, as, ooh, somebody's going to get a little loose on his inside. That's Scott Glasso. Ford's just drifting up, and fortunately, he just, slight contact, gets into the door there of Wes Hurd Jr. That's what gets Wes Hurd out of shape. Scott Glasso saves it after getting hit again by the 12, and in fairness to Wes Hurd Jr., he did a great job trying to save it there. The problem was just about any time that your car ends up back on the racetrack, you know you're going to get hit, and in that case... Really just nothing he could do. So it looks like Wesser Jr., at least for now, was able to continue. Fortunately for any Jeffrey Souza fans, he was not. Major damage still in the pits, trying to get anything fixed that he can. And so with that, we do go back a little bit closer towards the front where we find ourselves at Kyle Oakley, the 17 machine. He's another one of the guys we have carrying an onboard camera for us here tonight. He's another one that's came really close a couple times capturing that first win. I think the biggest one, though, that comes to mind is probably Bristol in terms of just how close he was there towards the end, starting on the second row with a shot to potentially capture victory at one of the crown jewel tracks. Things didn't quite work out there, so he's still looking for number one at least of the season. And then last but certainly not least, 
We saw him in a wreck earlier, and now we see him still, unfortunately, trying to fight the battles back from that as he finds himself 11 laps down. It's Ryan Haynes out of Center Hill, Florida. And as we now hit the 100 lap to go mark, Haynes just going to continue to run for just about eight points as he can. As oh, Wesser Jr. with another big moment just in front of these guys. Now he's trying to get out of the way as Ryan Haynes, I think, may have got into him there a little bit. Now Hurd Jr. is in the grass, back on track. Boy, Wesser Jr. is all over the place right now. He is really struggling here. This was coming through the turn here. And do him and Ryan Shiro get together? They do. Shiro just washes up, gets into Wesser Jr., gets into him a couple times. The 12's trying everything to save, but he does. But as he continues to gather it up, gets loose again. And then when he comes down, the 39, Ryan Haynes was there with the head of steam. He had nowhere to go. So he runs into the back of him. And I'm sure Ryan Haynes right now has got to be getting pretty frustrated. As does Wesser Jr. He's been getting punted around here in the course of the last couple laps. And I'm not sure how much longer he's going to sit for it. But up front, it is Austin Fitzgerald leading by well over two and a half seconds. Shows you the speed that he's got running right now. And another one of the guys that we call a king, or one of the kings of long runs is Jeff Marble. And he's showing you right now that when we start to get into a longer portion of a run, that that car has some spark, has some pizzazz, if you will. And he's got himself up six positions where he started, by the way. Danny Gutierrez in third. Tyler Marble fourth. Jay Kixon in fifth. Brandon Saylor in sixth. Michael Mueller seventh. Alan Pajari eighth. Oh, caution is out. Trouble. Trouble for Quentin Clark. Two around on the back stretch. It's Clark and Pajari. Pajari getting the worst of this one, it looks like. And the first caution of the night strikes with 37 of 134 laps complete. Honestly, with how aggressive the restart is, I didn't think we'd see these guys make it this long, but they do. Now, let's find out exactly what causes this issue right here is... This was coming off of turn number two. Here's the 34. Ooh, he, wonder, he was, well, he might have been a little loose, but that's a big case of net code right there. You can see that the double zero never actually touches him. He gets close, but I think he's getting ready to turn back down here. Watch it again in slow motion here. Notice the double zero is never going to hit him. Well, I mean, I say he wasn't. It was going to be really, really close. Because you got to remember, the net code is acting on the zero, double zero car the same way it is on the 34, where it thinks they're making contact. So it reacts the same way as if they did. And if there's no invisible contact there, I think that double zero maybe drifts up just enough. But it's, it's a really, really hard call. And you know it was nothing egregious. I'm assuming he was probably just trying to jump behind the 34, catch a little bit of a draft, and unfortunately ends in this chaos right here in this incident. The problem is that, again, you don't have a fast pair, and Pajari and Clark both had pretty fast cars, and both took pretty big shots off that inside safer barrier, so we'll have to see if they're able to continue, and if they are, I mean, how in the world do you approach the rest of this race? You know you got damage, but you know that you've got to be aggressive if you want to get back to the front. So we take one more angle. Uh, this one here from, we're going to go to the slow cam, see if we can show you exactly the moment right there. It's where the 34 is hooked and around. This thing's going to go. I think he's a little bit maybe more lucky that it spun around as much as it did. Because if he hits that wall head on, and this car is definitely toast. But the way he hits it instead, it's looks like mostly contained to the right front. So you see at the end, everybody trying to drive away. So as we go back live up front, it is Austin Fitzgerald being scored as your leader. Jeff Marble second. Danny Gutierrez in third. Tyler Marble fourth and Jake Hickson rounding out your top five. All right, we are going to go take a quick side-by-side -side break. Stick with us. We'll be right back at Texas.
Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway for the Texas 200, presented by the Fast Track Sim Racing Cup Series, which is presented in turn by the Alloy Wheel Repair Specialist. Boy, what a great run it's been so far here tonight. 40 laps complete of 134. So that means we are now under 100 to go, and probably the biggest storyline is how this thing turns into a one-stop from here. Now, Pajari, of course, involved in that last incident, if you will, with Quentin Clark. And so we'll take a look on how those two are doing here in just a moment. But as we go back into the Geico restart zone, green flag back in the air here at Texas. Good restart from Jeff Marble on the outside. He's going to hold Austin Fitzgerald on us down into turn number one. You see the 48 of Tyler Marble licking his chops right now. If either one of these two makes a mistake, you know he's going to try to pounce on it. Big thing that we saw, honestly, from real life and even here tonight that's going to apply the rest of the way through is restarts. You have to capitalize. They're just so important and so crucial. Really the best time to get track position with the way these cars run. We know how bad and how hard it is to pass people in dirty air. So you can see that not only did Jeff Marble take advantage by taking over the lead, but Tyler Marble is looking to try to do the same right here. He's now taken second away, but stuck on the outside for the moment. There's a look at the in-live cockpit, if you will, here for Jeff Marble. And I want to see if we can get a view out of his... Go to his gearbox here, rather. And he loves seeing these two side by side behind him. The longer they stay side by side, the further he can try to pull away. And three and four, I would definitely say the inside's got the advantage. One and two, I think at least on new tires, the outside maybe gets a little bit more. The problem is here that if you fail, you really just kind of wasted some tire for nothing. And it seems like Tyler Marble has decided to abandon ship as he has now jumped back to the bottom. And so it's going to be their teammate, the rookie Brandon R. Sailor for Team Marvel Eye Racing. It's gonna jump to the outside, trying to make a move. Ooh, Conklin and Jared Bundy there almost with some contact going into turn number three. Starting to single file out back everywhere else, just about Andrew Russo two by two on his inside is the 07 of Thomas O'Hara. There's Ryan Shiro in the 20, Troy Baker, one of the rookies looking to his outside. So 44 laps complete again. Everybody can go about 55 to 60 laps on fuel. So you'd kind of expect that they could make it probably anywhere at this point in terms of fuel to maybe lap, we'll call it lap 90 or so, I would say. Or excuse me, I take that back. Eh, maybe a little bit further, either lap, either lap 100 or maybe a little bit longer. Problem is the tires can't make it that long. So see if anybody that tries or decides rather to try and give it a shot or if everybody keeps a pretty uniform strategy, as here's a move to the inside from Raz and a look to the outside by Brandon Saylor. Saylor sent it in a little bit too hard though, had to bail out. Now you see on the bottom, a little bit of a train starting to stack up here behind the 48 of Tyler Marble. And you gotta remember the speed that that 97 had, at least in terms of the way that car fired off in the short run. Didn't have a ton in the long run, but I think he knows that and that's why he's going for as much track position as he can right here, hoping to maybe get back to the lead and then try to get another caution and have another shot at it. But right now it is still all the 15 of Jeff Marble who continues to lead here at Texas. Now you see Mraz able to pull it just a little bit of a side draft off the OA, but now Gutierrez starts to pinch him back into turn number three and man, this two have got to be careful. There was almost some contact right there. These guys are going at it and Meanwhile, everybody else single file out saying, hey, I think it's time to ride this thing or ride it out a little bit, if you will. So we still have well over 75, 80 laps to go in this race or so. So I think at this point, you know, as a driver, you start trying to save some tire. We've already got the restart out of the way where you start to settle in. And either this time or about maybe the next five laps at most from now, that's where you pretty much are where you're going to be without maybe picking off another position or two. But again, the way these cars drive here, once traffic starts to get single filed out and starts to get spread out, a lot of dirty air and it's really hard if you're not the leader to make just about anything happen. So, but again, so far we've seen kind of a plethora of leaders started with Andrew Raz before shifting it over to Austin Fitzgerald while we were still under green flag conditions. And now after our first caution, Chef Marble who's starting to show some fire here in the middle portions of going, well not quite middle yet, but here in about 50 laps. We will be rather about 10, make it, make it 12 laps away from halfway. And so again, with that pit stop still expected, I think it becomes a question of when do you decide to go in? I know I said it becomes a one stop. I guess it could still technically be two, 
depending on how bad you wear these tires, but I, I just don't think anybody's, you know, planning on that strategy or anybody's going to need to use that strategy. It certainly wouldn't be as effective. So as the 97 Raz works his way off of four, it is the 97 who is now the leader, followed by Jeff Marble and then Austin Fitzgerald, Tyler Marble in fourth, and Michael Mueller in fifth. Danny Gutierrez, Jay Kixon, Jared Bundy, and Brandon Saylor. The rest of the guys currently rounding out your top ten. 50 laps now complete, two by two, all the way through. Now, I'll tell you what, if you like what you're seeing here tonight, I think this is a good time to promote some of it. And you need to make sure that you're back here next Monday night because the Fast Track Sim Racing Cup Series is going to head to a track that, believe it or not, is even more exciting and more fast, or faster rather than Texas Motor Speedway, and that is Talladega Super Speedway. That will be the second of the Noble Four races. So while there will also be regular season points and the chance at a win on the line, there will also be a little bit more up for grabs if you're able to have that highest average finishing position by the end of the Noble Five Challenge. So we'll be keeping an eye on that stat. After that, we head over to Miles the Monster at Dover, followed by Kansas to open up May. Darlington and North Wilkesboro is going to be the all-star race for these guys head to Gateway, followed by Sonoma and Iowa. Boy, those last three I put out, that's a tough stretch of tracks to have to think about as a driver. Very, very difficult. She got an oval similar to Richmond, but basically just faster. A road course in wine country, and then Gateway, which is just about one of the flatter, oddest shaped ovals that you will see. It's just about all a NASCAR. As for points, though, Austin Fitzgerald's still leading with a pretty comfortable lead, all things considered as well, I'd say. Jake Hickson in second. Jeff Marble third. Tyler Marble fourth. Michael Mueller in fifth. Kyle Oakley in sixth. Ty Iopolito in seventh. Ryan Shiro in eighth. Quentin Clark in ninth. And Danny Gutierrez rounding out your top ten. All right, so as we go back on track now to see how everybody's doing and whether or not we've had any big shuffles, the answer is, well, we really haven't. You know, it's just not been much for anybody to do. I'll tell you now, there is a couple guys who have had a lot on their plate here with how hard they're getting raced, but one who hasn't has been Andrew Mraz and Jeff Marble. They continue to kind of put everybody else on an island, separating themselves from the rest of the group. And so now I wonder, is it that, you know, maybe Jeff, is he pushing his stuff a little harder? Does the car just have that natural speed? Nonetheless, it seems to be working for him right now, so he's going to keep it up. Ken Williams says, good evening, everyone. Good, or hello, Ghost. Good to see you, Karen. Hope you're having a good night. We appreciate you coming out here to watch a little bit of the fast track guys go at it for about an hour and a half. Further back in the pack, just a little bit of two-by-two -two action here between Tracy Powers. And it looked like it was going to maybe be the 42, but again, they get that sorted out quickly as well. And so everybody's going to be able to continue on without any sort of trouble there as we have now ticked off 55 of 84 laps complete here at Texas. And, oh, man, just as we pan the camera away, you saw him going through wide out back. That always makes you nervous, especially when you have to do it on either old tires or very shaky hands. So we'll have to see how things pan out here. And a roll on the inside with great momentum is the 72 here of Johnny McCulchuk. Mark Zabach, currently the Canadian driver back in 28th, Glenn Grigsby 29th, Todd Shiro in 30th. Christopher Hall 31st, Rachel Hunt back in 32nd. I'm trying to see if she's lost just one or two. Remember, she started up in that 10th position, so she had a great starting qualifying effort here for her first race, but Unfortunately, that has not translated over to race pace, so she's still trying and going to be continuing to try to figure this thing out before we get to a point where she just can't. But as the stands for the moment, we are going to take a quick break, but again, we will go side by side so you don't miss a thing. Stick with us. We'll be right back at, or excuse me, at Texas.
Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway. Well, you saw it all during nonstop chain for the lead, but man, oh man, what a battle it was for it. And we may not be done yet. Jeff Marble is going to take another look to the inside of the rookie, Andrew Mraz. And I talk about a battle. I mean, these two have been trading blows for multiple laps now. Only 63 completed. And I just, I have to believe that all this racing is setting at least Austin Fitzgerald, who currently sits in fourth up for a late run here if this thing keeps going. But at least for now, Jeff Marble doing everything he can to hold off Andrew Mraz. As there's the onboard now for Jeff Marble. We were looking at Andrew Mraz onboard for a moment. And he gives him a little shot there down the straight. Bails out and he's, he's almost trying a little bit of a cross over here in three and four, which is kind of interesting because you almost cannot make that move work in any of the other series with the way the car drives here. But Jeff Marble is certainly making pretty easy work of it right now. Now I do want to show you here the dashboard and notice something in terms of on the actual virtual dashboard there as well. There is shifting that goes on at this track. Jeff Marble not using it so much here. But somebody that we thought was, was Angel Mraz, a couple others, especially in the early part of a restart. You might see it a little bit more, but as it stands, at least right now, seems like not shifting might be the way to go as Jeff Marble not having a huge issue with it. And there you go as they get into turn number one. Fourth gear for Angel Mraz, and doesn't look like he ever even thinks about going down into third. And here's Tyler Marble. Boy, you hear that car starting to struggle. He has, I think, burned up the right sides. As you can hear, it's scrubbing tight, but also starting to get a little bit loose. See how that one pans out for him in the coming laps here. Maybe next couple of handfuls or a couple of dozens, rather, as that last pit window again opens. In terms of fuel, anytime probably about lap, I'd say lap 80 or so. But in terms of tire management and how much tire you can work on, or, or excuse me, how much tire you need for a run, I think maybe... We don't see anybody pit until we get closer to the lap 100 mark. If you can make it that far, and if you got to split the middle, which could be another valuable option, maybe right around lap 90. Anything, though, that I think we see of anybody trying to come in here before we get to lap, probably honestly lap 90 is just going to be a little too soon, and I just don't know if I see it working out in terms of the short pitting idea. And I also don't know if you'd be able to make it the rest of the way. Now, you definitely would, but... Just think that might be a little bit too soon in terms of making that pit stop. I think I've misspoken on a couple of things here. It's been a little bit of a long day, so I apologize if I've had a couple of hiccups here on a couple of things. Is I just realized the way I kind of explained when the fuel window opens might have been a little tricky. I'm not sure if I said it this way, but it's, yeah, it's when you have about 55 or 60 to go. And, of course, 60 to go would be right around lap 74 or so, so... Again, I just, but I think it's too early is what my point is. And so we'll see if anybody decides to go in right as it opens, right in the middle, or potentially towards the end of the fuel window if you're banking on a caution. Now, if you're someone like Jake Hickson, I mean, what do you do here? Do you keep following what your teammates do? And it seems like it's starting to work at least on some of the guys in the top five for Austin Fitzgerald. As you see, he's going to get around Mraz, and now he's going to try to go track down the two team Marble Eye Racing teammates of Jeff Marble and Tyler Marble. And another little bit of an interesting tidbit, if you will, for these two right now, neither, or excuse me, come back, I was gonna say, we saw both of these guys with great runs all season so far, but both of them still looking to see if they can kind of finish out the job. We'll go ahead and put it that way. And I mean, you know, they show speed at just about every track we go to, Team Marble I Racing, that is, but they added on a couple of rookies, and I don't want to, I don't want to fully call it rocky, but it's been a little bit of a different start to the season than maybe what they were expecting. Jeff Marble, though, as of recent, has been picking it up, and I think it's just a matter of time before they tack on their first official win of the season. Now, of course, Jeff Marble, he did get the job done in the clash, but we're talking about the first official races of the season through the point of where we are now. And again, surprising of a stat as it is here, just sitting here reading it, yeah, neither Jeff Marble or Tyler Marble have found themselves in victory lane yet. But boy, they have found themselves really close a couple of times, including last week in Martinsville, where it looked like Jeff Marble had the race just about wrapped up without a caution. Fortunately, that didn't happen. 72 laps now complete here at No Limits, Texas. And leading the way now, it is still Jeff Marble, 15 car 
has looks like as it stands about a half a second gap on his teammate Tyler Marble but look who's starting to lurk in the shadows and creep into the picture now Austin Fitzgerald in the 74 talked about I think the way his car is set up at least at the moment as he is banking on these really really long runs which so far we already got one tonight and we're looking at number two here which if we get to green flag stop you never know maybe this thing actually goes the entire rest of the way under green and I think that would suit Fitzgerald to a T in terms of I mean I, I think there's no way he loses this race if we keep going on a long run he is sitting here tracking down Tyler Marble and I think he's going to be tracking down Jeff Marble here briefly as well and the gap between the two Team Marble, Team Marble iRacing teammates has shortened up as well so we'll see how hard the 15 is willing to race the 48 and we'll have to see how hard the 48 is willing to race the 15 Going further back in the field, checking in on the Knights is some of the people that had troubles. Ryan Haynes, Anthony Hanley, Troy Baker, and looks like Jeffrey Souza. Actually, I take that back. Souza still out on track. So 35th on back has retired from the race. Again, that was Troy Baker, Ryan Haynes, and Anthony Hanley. And so Troy Baker currently, or excuse me, Jeffrey Souza currently being the last car at least on track. But as it stands now, he is not on the lead lap, unfortunately. Alan Pajari, 33rd. He was involved in that wreck with Quentin Clark and now just almost again trying to scavenge whatever he can. Todd Shiro's had, well, from what we've seen, at least a relatively uneventful night. The speed just hasn't really been there for the six car here today. Rachel Hunt in 31st, still holding on to a pretty good run, all things considered, for your rookie race. As she is down 21 from where she started, which again shows you the qualifying speed was there for the 61 with a 10th place effort. Right now, she just seems like she is really, really struggling with the handling. We actually hop to an onboard view here real quick with Rachel and see how much wheel does she put in here and how bad is this thing slipping up off the corner it just sounds really really tight I know she's kind of babying it right now taking it easy trying to get things figured out and looks like she decided she does not want a piece of the pack that's coming up on her as quick as it is so she bails as Scott Glasser sits back at 30th Kenneth Bartholomew in 29th Christopher Hall 28th Quentin Clark in 27th Glenn Grigsby, 26th, with Mark Zabak in 25th. Wesser Jr., 25th. Cody Matthews in 23rd. Greg Bartlett, 22nd. Jacob Musso in 23rd, with Ryan Shiro in 20th. Matthew Gearinger in 19th. Roger Shelton in 18th. Andrew Russo in 17th. Alan Sohara, 16th. Danny Gutierrez in 15th. Johnny McCulchuk, 14th. Tracy Powers in 13th. Kyle Oakley in 12th. Ty Io Polito in 11th. Michael Mueller. The first man inside the top 10 and still leading the race is Jeff Marble. Tyler Marble still in second, but the gap to be closed up relatively significantly between those two is now closed as Fitzgerald's taking a peek to the outside, and Tyler Marble got really, really tight. He had to chase it up the track, and as a result, looks like Fitzgerald had to do the same. And they both do find a way to catch it, but another really close call. I mean, tell you, it's just a matter of time. These guys, just they, they can't keep doing it like this. The aggression level has been through the roof since just about the drop of the green, and Texas certainly has not disappointed tonight. You got what you paid for. And how about as these guys continue to rip out these laps, single file? A little crank it up here at Texas. Here we go.
And that'll do it for tonight's segment of Crank It Up. I hope everybody did enjoy. As we go back live up front, the battle between the two long run cars is on. And man, I, I think at this point, and again, I know there's still a decent amount of racing left to go, but we are, you know, about 20 laps or so over halfway. And I think the biggest thing, not quite 20, by the way, but I think the biggest thing that I have to say is what a job that Jeff Marble has done up to this point. I mean, you know, he gets out to the lead. He's got to fend off a charge from the rookie to maintain clean air. And as much tire as that burned up in of itself, now he's been trying to deal with Austin Fitzgerald here for the last however many laps and doing a pretty good job at it, at least for now. But at one point, at some point rather, you start to ask yourself, will those tires hold or will they eventually give out? So, so far so good is Jeff Marble doing just about everything you can do textbookly. And that is just to try to take away the air off the nose of the 74. If he gets tight, it's going to be hard for him to set up a run. However, if he gets clean air and you give him the opportunity, you know he's going to strike. So here we go. Fitzgerald trying to kind of open up that entry a little bit, get the car to rotate so he can get a big exit. Problem is the back tires just do not want to stick right now. And you could hear it right there. I mean, he was trying everything to get the throttle down, and it just wouldn't go. Meanwhile, Jeff Marble here, who's got a little bit more front down force, can be... Equally as sketchy in terms of once the back end gets loose, you need the front end and the back end to stick, but only the front end sticking if you're in clean air. That's a whole other debate, but point is right now, these two, at least if this thing stays green, are determining your battle for the win. Now, if you're Jeff Marble here, you got to think about with pit stops up and uh, I'm not sure, what do you want to call it? We'll call it 15 laps maybe or so, give or take. And so what do you do, right? I mean, do you try to come in here early do you try to match Fitzgerald? Do you try to go long? I mean, I think if Austin Fitzgerald gets by and the window's open for Jeff, I think you go in. Now, granted, we just hit about 50 laps to go a few laps ago. So I don't think Jeff's content to go in just yet. I think these guys would like to get to a point where they've only got to run maybe 35, 40 at most laps on a set of tires. So maybe he waits till maybe around 94 to 100 here. If you're Jeff Marble, and you would have thought that this battle would have brought somebody else back into the picture, say Tyler Marble, who sits in third, but it has not. Tyler's up one spot from where he started. That's it. Jared Bundy, he's up 21 positions from where he started. Ryan Conklin back in seventh. He's up 16 from where he started. And then Andrew Mraz going the opposite direction, down eight from where he started. The boy, the 97 right now, all he wants to see is a caution, followed by a lot more late cautions because he's got a great short run car. Problem is he doesn't have a very good long run car. Next place that we had here on Ghost Racing Network is going to be on Friday night over to the Asphalt Outlaws Racing Truck Series. Make sure you don't miss out on them. Put a phenomenal event on last night, or excuse me, on Friday night rather, I meant to say, at Talladega Super Speedway over in the Noma Truck Series just the other night. So a lot of great truck racing and a couple of those series. And I mentioned Noma because they'll be back on Saturday as well. And then the Fast Track Sim Racing Cup Series, which of course matches the real life schedule, they're going to be at Talladega next week. And so I know I mentioned that once, but it shows you just how excited I certainly am for it. I think the racing there is going to be phenomenal as it always is. The 74 Fitzgerald continuing to move his line. I mean, this is great stuff. He is trying everything. It is like a cat and mouse game, but we are at that point in the run. Tires just so worn out that it's just finding clean air and hoping the car sticks. And right now for Fitzgerald, it's just not happening. I mean, the 74, at least from the onboard view and everything we can see, and here it sounds like he's really just about maxing that car out. I don't think it's really got much, if anything else, and he just cannot find a way to get to that bumper of Jeff Marble. And granted, he saw a little bit more of a conservative approach right there through three and four. I think he's trying to maybe keep this thing together, and so... Well, we talked about what pitch strategy does Jeff Marble try? What pitch strategy does Austin Fitzgerald try? Because as it stands right now, again, you know, does he feel like his car is fast enough to when he comes out, even if he's behind Marble, take the lead from him? Or does he feel like there's a chance that they get trapped in the same boat that they're in right here where he gets stuck behind Marble and once tires were out enough, he's maybe stuck there for good. So we'll have to see who does what, who pits when and how it affects who. But these two, again, still have checked out on everybody else by over two, almost by over three seconds, at least in terms of Tyler Marble. Well, they stay on an island by themselves. Everybody else looking for any positions that they can get when they can get them here. 
So we just saw Michael Mueller going at it. Jared Bundy, Tayo Polito back, trying to hold off Danny Gutierrez himself. Jeff Shutt for No Excuses Racing back in eight. Thomas O'Hara ninth, and Tracy Powers battling right now side by side with Brian Conklin. And that is the battle for 10th as Powers slides up. Conklin looking for a bit of a run here. Does he have anything to drop low? No, he doesn't. So he's just going to go ahead and give a nice little push to the 25. There's Jacob Moose on the 95, the 97 as well. Andrew Moraz, who continues to fall, really needs a caution, a break or something. Now, oh, hold on to it. He doesn't want to be the caution. And that was a really close call there for Andrew Moraz. I was getting ready to say that, remember, with it being open setups, there's certain adjustments that these drivers can make. Anytime they make a pit stop, whether it be under green, and yeah, I mean, not too surprised to see this, right? Car was really starting to struggle. A couple others decided it was time to go in, and the 97 of Moraz was definitely one of them. So as he'll bring it down here for service, looks like the only other one that's going to go ahead and follow is going to be Danny Gutierrez, who actually went in first. And so... Oh, what's her junior? Actually, looks like he's going to bring it down as well. A little bit of a tricky pit road. Not one of the hardest ones we've went to, but pit road in general, always a bit of a tricky subject. Trying to figure out how to kind of talk about, well, I guess we'll say how to kind of get through it without having any trouble in the sense of you don't want to get ran over from behind, but you got to get in quick, get out quick. A lot more that goes into a pit stop than people realize is now a ton of pit stops underway. Austin Fitzgerald leads him in, so... Any questions about the strategy play have now been answered. Fitzgerald decided his best shot was to short pit it. That'll put him on offense for now, but probably going to put him on defense later. Mueller, he comes in as well, as does Brandon Saylor, Taio Polito, Jeff Shutt, Jake Hickson, Brian Coughlin, and Thomas O'Hara. And so how does Jeff Marble react? Well, he goes in simply a lap later. Looks like Tyler Marble chooses to do the same. So now we're going to turn our attention to the track map and the running of Austin Fitzgerald. So he's currently in 12. I know there's a lot of dots kind of scattered together right now, so we'll try our best to point it out, but I believe it's the one coming off a turn or down the back stretch. There you go, going into turn three. Now, keep an eye on this dot here as they get to the front stretch. We'll compare that to Jeff Marble. So here we go. Austin Fitzgerald now working his way off a of turn number four down the front stretch as Jeff Marble now just leaving the pits. Now, again, Jeff Marble still has to get up to speed. You see that green circle right there. Can Fitzgerald get around? It's going to be really close. Still getting through the gears here. Jeff Marble, there goes the 74. New leader, Austin Fitzgerald. I say leader. It's not going to be official leader, of course, until everything cycles through. Right now, your official leader is Cody Matthews. As we have more pit stops here, Jacob Musso, Tracy Powers, and Christopher Hall. But that was big for Austin Fitzgerald. I mean, that was his only chance. If he comes out to there behind Jeff Marble and gets trapped again, he's not getting the win. I mean, he's... Probably still looking good for a good finish, but, you know, he's already got one win, and you know that he's looking to capture a couple more before this season's all said and done, and we make it to the playoffs. So I like the call, showing a little bit of aggression for Austin Fitzgerald above the pit box. But, you know, now if you're Jeff Marble, it's time to start digging deep. We talked about how close he's come a couple different times this season. You know that that's in the back of his mind right now, and he knows the position that he is in. And the fact that not only is... He proven that he can hold off Austin Fitzgerald tonight, but he's also proven that when given the right opportunity, or excuse me, he's also proven that if he's given the right opportunity here at the end, he could be able to play offense the entire way through since, of course, he decided to pit a little bit later instead of having to worry about playing any more defense. So while all this has been going on, this was an earlier issue that we had with Troy Baker, by the way, that I meant to stop on. And this was just getting up the racetrack and in the marbles and once he does just the outside wall spins around Ooh, ouch pretty good shot into the inside wall where he comes to a halt just after pit exit and the merge line there but again another one that could have brought out the caution but didn't and I'm sure Jeff Marble's probably happy it did now in comparison to where these two run and what they're running you see Jeff Marble currently as it stands just exiting four as Fitzgerald is already on the front stretch not a huge gap between these two. In fact, looking at the actual gap in terms of the time allotted, at least, if you will, or the time separating them, looks like it's about maybe about a second. Maybe about, yeah, just about a second, a little bit more. And Fitzgerald is continuing to gain time on Jeff Marble right now. And I wonder if that was maybe a setup that he chose a little bit intentionally to push it a little bit harder earlier this time as 
feels like maybe it's going to be easier to defend later as what he just saw with trying to defend Jeff Marble. So as we have another big round of pit stops, here's the lap times for Fitzgerald over the last five, 30.8, 30.9, 30 30.9. Compare that to Jeff Marble, 30.9, 30.9. So a little bit slower, but I think part of that could be Jeff Marble trying to do a little bit more tire saving. So as we talked about seeing another group bring it down to the pits, looks like Cody Matthews going to be one of them as he makes his way out with no issues. Good, good clean stop there for the 10 car. SWM Motorsports, that hands the lead over to Quentin Clark. And I think anybody that's staying out now, you got to just assume is going out in terms of the long run here and just hoping maybe somehow, some way we can get a caution, but just don't think it's going to happen. Only other person to stay out at this point, at least, is Kenneth Bartholomew. And he is up 28 positions in total. And I know he's a man that's looking forward to next week, Talladega. Remember the speed he showed last time we were at Speed Weeks? Of course, getting a pole for the biggest race of the season, the Capital Auto Daytona 250. And so set himself up with a good run in the clash, the good run in the duels, a great qualifying effort. And now see if this strategy maybe cuts him a bit of a break and gives him a chance to gain some momentum going into next week with a late caution here tonight. But when they cross the stripe this next time, it's going to be exactly 31 laps to go here at Texas. And while we still have a couple guys in front, that's how we're keeping an eye on. The big thing we're keeping an eye on is this battle right here. It's going to ultimately, I think, develop by the time this race is all said and done. And it's about between Jeff Marble and Austin Fitzgerald. You can see Fitzgerald in front has a big lead right now. Jeff Marble, again, slipping back. And actually, it slipped back even further since we last checked. It's now back to almost two seconds behind Austin Fitzgerald. But just wonder if this is him saving some tire. Not wanting to push the issue here. Now, I know Fitzgerald did pit a lap sooner and kind of showed you that the difference that that one lap of fresher tires can make. I'm telling you that Jeff Marble, I think he's got a little trick up his sleeve here with he's He's going to let Fitzgerald push it. It's going to come down to can he track him down before this race is all said and done. But, you know, at what point do you decide, okay, well, it's time to go because you know that you're going to run out of laps eventually if you're not careful. So far. It's been a fun one here tonight. Let's go back and check on how some of the rest of the field is doing here again. Yeah, it looks like Jeffrey Souza, who we initially noted was the last car on the track, is now back off the track. So that makes Alan Pajari the last man on the track, at least for the moment. By the way, in case you missed it, we only had one yellow flag this whole race earlier, and it was for an incident involving Alan Pajari and Quentin Clark. Here's a look at that issue as Clark and Pajari got together and so it's just one of those incidents. I feel like I didn't analyze it the best when it actually had happened, but just really hard racing there. And I don't know if there had ever been actual contact between the two. I talked about Quentin Clark sliding up and, you know, it's just one of those things where it didn't feel like he was necessarily going to hit him. It was going to be close. And that slight bit of net code, though, is ultimately what catches the 34 and the double zero big hit for Pajari. Double zero, though. Both of those cars able to continue on. Pajari with the bad end of the stick, though, back in 33rd now. Whereas Quentin Clark with some strategy plays. Got himself a little bit closer to the front than that. Todd Shiro, 32nd. Glenn Grigsby in 31st. As now Kenneth Bartholomew, you see him in the pits making his stop. That pushes him back to 30th. And there's Quentin Clark, who right now sits in 29th as he makes his way off the pits as well. Mark Zabak, 28th. Rachel Hunt, how about this recovery so far for the rookie? She's doing a phenomenal job as now being back up to 27th, again, qualified 10th, fell back, had to go through some adversity in terms of it seemed like pit sequence and maybe the car started to fade a little bit on her, but she's picked it back up since, maybe made a couple adjustments and got this thing working in all the right ways right now as she continues to pick up a couple spots, but got to be careful. This thing might start to get tight here. As it looks like that's exactly what's happening for the 61, so she may be due for one more pit stop potentially before this race is all said and done. Cody Matthews, 26th. Scott Glasso, 25th. There's Christopher Hall in 24th with Greg Bartlett in 23rd. Jake Hickson. Going to wonder here if this was potentially a speeding penalty. I'm just not sure how the 16 fell this far back all of a sudden or at least some sort of trouble in the pits. Wester Jr., 21st. Matthew Gearinger in 9th or 20th. Roger Shelton, 19th. Ryan Shiro in 18th. Jacob Musso, 17th with Andrew Russo in 16th. 
Tracy Powers, 15th. Brandon Saylor in 14th. Johnny McCulchuk, 13th. Kyle Oakley, 12th. Thomas O'Hara in 11th. Brian Conklin, or, or excuse me, Brian Conklin in 10th. Jeff Shutt, 11th. Or 9th, rather. Apologize. Andrew Moraz in 8th. Ty Eo Polito in 7th. Danny Gutierrez, 6th. Tyler Marble in 5th. Michael Mueller, 4th. Jared Bundy in 3rd. Jeff Marble, 2nd. And now your leader, Austin Fitzgerald, in 1st. But guess what? Jeff Marble is tracking him down. Talked about saving tire early versus guys that were pushing the pace. And it seemed like during, after rather, that green flag stopped it. Fitzgerald tried the opposite strategy and tried pushing the pace early to try to get around some of those lap cars and try to maybe get a gap between him and Jeff Marble. And it worked initially, but it seems like now Jeff is almost like a fishing pole and starting to reel that 74 right back in. And when he gets there, Getting to him and passing him is going to be two completely different things, especially with the kind of defense we saw that the 15 was able to play on the 74. You wonder how much of that Fitzgerald took down for mental notes and is going to try to do the same here. And now again, if you take away that bottom lane, it makes the guy have to try to either go up top to search for clean air or just get tight behind you. Now, granted, the tires aren't super old yet, so I think there's a chance that you can still get something on the outside, especially if you saved a little bit, but... They're at that point where they're going to start quickly falling off. So if you're Jeff, you don't want to jump out there and just waste tire and not complete a move. As we see Mark Zabach, one of the lappers, going to try to get a lap back here. So he'll go around the 74 of Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald's going to let him by. And so that nine is going to really kind of play. It's going to play really a lot. Or excuse me. It's going to play into this equation really a lot more than maybe these guys were expecting him to as I don't know if he's going to have enough speed to necessarily pull away here. And if his tires start to fade, he might come right back to the 74 and the 15. But I'm telling you, 21 laps to go. Jeff's there. He's there, and he's going to be setting this 74 up for a move any lap right now. And if he can get around Austin Fitzgerald, once he does so, I should say, that's when he's going to turn his attention to the scoring pile on there on the top left of your screen and how many laps it says to go. And he is going to hope that they continue to tick off. He's going to hope that that little green circle stays that way and doesn't flip to yellow. And that's pretty much the same setup that he was in last week at Martinsville where he got clear, got to the lead. And I'll tell you what, Jeff, I think what he's going to tell you too, if he wins this race somehow, he's, he's going to say, I told you that we had a good car. If we could get a long run, first race of the season where they had a run this long, boy, it has paid off so far. But Fitzgerald now starting to maybe find a little bit more life in the car. As Mark Sabak again, still kind of playing Maybe not into the favor of the 74, but neither in the favor of the 15. But providing a lot of dirty air for Austin Fitzgerald. As Fitzgerald's going to try the bottom here again, probably right now, saying, man, get out of the way. Either go or let us go. Zabak, again, trying to stay on that lead lap just in case we do get a caution. Actually, yeah, that's battling exactly for the lead lap. Wanted to check to make sure he wasn't multiple down. So he has a right to do so. But it's definitely... Definitely playing into the hands here of how this race could end. And that gap did get down to three tenths pretty quick. We saw that, but since then, it really has not changed too much. It seems like it's kind of evened out, hit the chip now, at least for a moment. So we'll go back a little bit further and see how some of these other battles are looking. I'm going to go through a couple of our driver cams one more time before we keep all eyes up front the rest of the way. And there is Kyle Oakley in the 17 car. He's been able to keep it clean all night. Is oh, oh, man, just as I say it, big moment. You saw that one. What a catch from the 17 right there. Boy, Brandon Saylor on his inside. Man, oh, man, Oakley got all out of shape as the run continues to go on. Those tires are wearing out. Nice piece of driving, though, as he gets it back down into the bottom lane and gets regrouped and gets it back together. Tracy Powers currently sitting back in that 14th spot. Jacob Musso in 15th. And then Ryan Shiro, who had a couple issues earlier in the 20. He dragged races down the front stretch here with Roger Shelton. Shelton will get the advantage into one and take that position away. Tyler Marvel. Oh, 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 Tyler with a big. Oh, my goodness. I'm sitting here watching the driver cam, and Tyler Marvel's hands just went 90 degrees right, left, right, left. So quick, I almost couldn't even tell. Holy moly, that was a huge catch for the 48. I'm going to hop on board with him here for just a moment as. He is working this car right now. It's getting really, really loose for him. And he's trying to do it while fending off. The 08 of Danny Gutierrez is taking a peek to the inside. And notice in that lower right corner, watch his hands here. That car gets loose. Oh, he gets turned! 
board. Danny Gutierrez right, sends Marvel down. around. Down. Caution is out. And I think both of the Team Marvel iRacing drivers not going to be happy with that one. And Tyler. Oh, he hits Brandon Saylor as well. Takes out his teammate in the process as he was trying to get back rolling. And that is catastrophe for Team Marble Eye Racing and how this race was going to pan out in general. Man, he is not happy. You cannot blame him. I'm telling you, I looked at about three or four of these driver cams. There was a lot of guys not happy with that because first off, that caution is going to mess up a lot of strategy playing. Second off, if you're Tyler, I mean, you had a great run going, and now you're potentially out of this race simply for just maybe a little bit too much aggression here. Let's see what happens here. I mean, it was pretty simple. I mean, there's not much to break down. It just looked like Danny Gutierrez gets into him here, and here we go. We'll watch this. From the onboard first here, Danny Gutierrez says, does he just get tight? That's what it looks like, doesn't it? Just looks like he's drifting up the track a little bit here. He's on the white line when he enters. Problem is, car's not staying down there. Marble's pinching him tight. I mean, he's got a right to do so, though. And Yeah, definitely nothing intentional there by Danny. He just gets tight, but try to go telling that to Tyler right now. I'm sure he's going to be saying, yeah, but man, I mean, you just... You're down there. You got to hold it down there. And one of those instances, this next gen car, we always talk about how aero dependent it is. And I'm not sure. I don't think, yeah, Tyler wasn't even quite down enough to take away any air. And there might have almost been a little net code there, but there was physical contact, which is what ultimately kind of finished the job here is the 48 is going to get sent around. And he's not the only one that gets collected. As there you see, the 08 tries to shoot the outside after. They make contact. The 19 tight Io Polito. Nothing he could do. The caution lights fly, and there goes Danny Gutierrez. That's pretty heavy damage as he's going to tag the wall again. You see suspension broke on that car. That thing's going to be headed to the hauler as well. But then we saw Tyler Marble as he was trying everything to get it back rolling. Going to do his teammate Brandon Saylor. I believe it was Brandon Saylor. Not sure if he actually hit anything, but. Oh, yeah, there you see the 24 there. That was after the contact. So let's back it up here and take a couple different angles here from the viewpoint of Tyler Marble. And so once he goes around here, I mean, there's just nothing you could do. It's too fast of a track to be able to save it at that spot. And boom, big hit for the 08, the 19 with nowhere to go. Glenn Grigsby, nice job to miss this one. But then right here, trying everything to get it fired back up, get it back going. And Sees a clearing. He's going to try to shoot the gap right here. And, oh, just clips his teammate there, Brandon Saylor. That sends Saylor around. you got to hope that didn't break a toe link or anything. For the 24 here. And I'm trying to figure it out, actually, if it did. Or just bumping around on the grass as he gets back on. I think he's okay, but certainly sustained still a little bit of damage. Go to the onboard here for Brandon Saylor. Watch this one. So they've already wrecked. I mean, the caution's out now. He starts slowing up. Sees it on the front stretch. See Tyler Marble high at this point. Sees the smoke. He's going to dive low here to go to shoot around. And then 48 starts coming down and just gets clipped. Goes for a couple loop-de-loops. Overall, no harm, no foul. But probably did cost him his track position still. And take one final look at this here from the TV static cam. And boom, backs it up hard into the outside wall. As he tries to get it back going. There's going to be that secondary contact. A couple guys barely missing that one as well. Besides Brandon Saylor, who of course was involved. And so now as we go back live, man, oh man. Jared Bundy right now being scored as your leader. So some strategy play there for the six. Then behind him, everybody in for tires. You have to at this point. I mean, tires are shot, and I believe we've only taken two. So everybody should technically still have, or had a set left, rather. And so it's Austin Fitzgerald who's being scored in second, Michael Mueller in third, Jeff Marble back in fourth. 
Ty Eopolito, 5th. Jeff Shutt, 6th. Andrew Mraz in 7th. Brian Conklin, 8th. Kyle Lokley, ninth, And Thomas O'Hara rounding out your top 10. So a couple of guys that are trying some strategy mixed in with a couple of guys who have had the fastest cars all night. And they're all going to be mixing it up here for 10 laps to decide a winner. Now, we've got to kind of see what both the 74 and the 15 have had on the long run. But now it's time to see what they've got on the short run. By the way, as for a couple of the cars involved in that last one, specifically Tyler Marble, looks like he did get it back out on track for whatever damages he could get repaired. As for Danny Gutierrez, he is currently off track still with major damage. So Jared Bundy, by the way, don't count him out of this equation just yet. Another driver looking for his first win on the season, as is the 15, the 19 as well. 27 of Jeff Shutt. Can't rule him out either. I mean, this... This is going to be crazy. I mean, we've only had two cautions up to this point. We might be getting ready to see a lot more. There's a reason they call it No Limits Texas, and I think just about everything is off limits here in terms of what goes, what doesn't. Everybody going to be going for the win here. Going to have 10 laps to do it. Here we go back into the Geico restart zone. Green flag in the air. 10 laps to go at Texas. Good restart for the first two rows inside and out, but Fitzgerald with a little bit more of a push from the 99. Jeff Shutt's going to duck to the inside just behind Jeff Marble. Two by two is Jared Bundy. He's going to try to get to a lead here over Fitzgerald. And, oh, Fitzgerald's going to try to pinch him for it. Oh, the 74 tags the wall down the back. Crossover to the inside, though. No contest here. Jared Bundy not going to try to make a second block at it. And that three still rolling a little bit of speed. Ooh, saw some debris flying out back here. Everybody hold it together here. It looks like they all do. So we go to TV3. A lot of aggression. Oh, man. Middle of the pack right there. I was trying to figure out exactly who that was. Brian Conklin and Andrew Mraz. By the way, if that 97 can get up here and we get another late caution, he's going to be a threat as well. Point is up front. Still a drag rate. Oh, there goes Mraz just as we talk about him. The 97's in the wall. Spinning now down the back as everybody else ducks low to miss him. And I think they all do. And that caution, I don't know if that's going to help or hurt Jeff Marble, but it certainly looks like, I don't know if it's going to help Austin Fitzgerald either. It almost looks like they're in their same positions here. It's just not quite enough time to potentially change it around right there. All right, so let's go break this one down here real quick before we go back live and see if we can't get an interview with one of these guys up front. All right, we'll back that up a little bit further, but here we go. Went off of turn number two. We just talked about Mraz. I said if he got clear of this traffic, well, the problem was he wasn't clear here. Brian Conklin, I don't think, and... Ooh. 97. Well, he got turned, it looked like, right there. Back this up and get a bit of a different angle, but it's definitely... seemed like... I mean, was there anything that happened here before? No, I, and you know, to be fair, it didn't really look intentional, so we're not going to go fishing for something that didn't happen, of course. There's a little bit of contact there, but I, I don't think that had it really anything to do with the contact that you're getting ready to see up here on the front, as it's just, it's just, it's close, it's really tight here. The 97 is not quite clear, but definitely Brian does drift down, so the 97 never actually comes up there close. But Mraz realizes he's not clear, and he stays down. The 37 is the one who ends up coming down and just barely clips him in the right rear. It's all it took, and that sent him into the outside wall where he got tagged by Thomas O'Hara. And then everybody else after that looks like was able to miss him. Another view here from TV1. That's a decent shot with the front end. That's definitely going to need potential repairs. It's is another decent shot there in the right rear from Thomas O'Hara. So as he got back rolling, Clint Creeksby with another really good miss there. He's had a couple of those tonight. I do want to go to an onward view here for Brian Conklin and watch this one here. Yeah, I mean, it's not the best look there, but I really don't think at by any means that he was trying to hook him here. I mean, look at his wheel. You can see it turning right. It's just the car is drifting. I think the thing that, you know, I was thinking initially was maybe he was trying to get clear behind and just slightly misjudged it. But now that we're even seeing the wheel go right, I just think that it was drifting down and it was so slight that he couldn't tell, but they were just that close that it didn't take much. And then once they do make contact, it's on from there. So 
nonetheless, now this will give us a restart with probably about five laps to go, assuming we get the one to go either... Well, if we don't get it this time, it'll be four to go. And we don't, so it'll be a four-lap shootout instead with Jared Bundy being able to retain the lead. So he held on right there. Nicely done. He still sits in first. Austin Fitzgerald second. Michael Mueller in third. Jeff Marble back in fourth with Jeff Shutt. Currently rounding out your top five. Well, Jared Bundy is the man on a mission here and the man right now that's showing the most impressive strategy call, if you will, being out in front right now. And question is, how much longer can he hold these guys off? Let's see if he's got a little bit of a feel on how much longer he can himself. Hey, Jared Bundy, this is all stuff in the booth. You got a copy? Yes, I do. All right, man. Well, here you go. Prime time. First chance to potentially capture a win on the season here in the best position to do it. You're sitting on the front row. It's going to be four laps to go. But how you feel about your chances here on a little bit of a different strategy than those other guys? Oh, just got to keep the lead, man. Got to keep that clean air because I'm on two tires. If I get the, even if one guy gets by me, it's over. Uh, I've got no chance, so. Got to keep that lead, keep the clean air, and hope for the best. Well, you know, sometimes you get in these positions where it's it almost feels like it's kind of destined to happen. And when you're in the spot that you are now, four laps to go, is as a driver, do you maybe be just a little bit more aggressive here than you normally would to try to keep that lead? Or do you just try to keep it clean up there and keep as best of a finish as you can get? Well, obviously, you don't want to wreck anybody, but there's going to be a lot of aggression. That's how this track is. Clean air is king, especially for my situation right now. So uh, I want it to be clean, but, you know, you got to be aggressive. And, hold, you know, you don't want to wreck anybody, but there's a fine line there. Well, the aggressive strategy call got you up here, so I'm thinking maybe stick with that plan for now. Well, we appreciate you talking to us, and we'll see if we're talking to you here in a couple laps. I'm hoping so, too. Thank you. Yo, Jared Bundy, SWM Motorsports driver. I think he put it perfect. Got to be aggressive. You don't want to wreck anybody. Hard thing to balance. Remember what we saw in the cup race here in real life the other day? As hard as guys were pushing it at the end, it wasn't guys necessarily wrecking each other. Of course, I mean, William Byron versus Ross Chastain, a little different. But, I mean, I'm looking more like a situation with what we saw with Denny Hamlin and Chase Elliott. You got to race really hard here at the end. And sometimes you might wreck yourself going for it. But I think Jared Bundy here is right. That clean air has been such a big factor tonight that if he can hold on to it, he may have a great shot, and honestly, I don't know if he would even have a problem here with seeing another caution right away. The less laps that we have to run, the better for that three car. But it's all going to start with this restart right here. He's got to get a smooth restart. It's got to be good in order to stay out in front. Again, Jeff Marble, Austin Fitzgerald now lined up in the same row. See if that changes some things around now as well. Here we go. Four laps to decide a winner. Green flag back in the air at Texas. Oh, big stack up on the inside. The 99 of Mueller got checked by the 27 of Jeff Shutt. He was able to keep it together, but that caused a lot of separation for the third row on the inside on back. It's all a race between your top four. And now that the 15 of Jeff Marble's got a bit of a run. Oh, Jared Bundy starts to wash up down the back. Oh, Jeff Marble gets into a car on the 99 of Mueller. He saves it. What a save from Michael Mueller. And now they're going to wreck, though. The 16 of Jay kicks it hard into Mark Zabak. They go to the outside wall. And I just saw over the driver cams, Jeff Marble mouthed the words, my bad. Just a little bit of a mistake right there. Maybe bounced off the wall. Not sure exactly what happened. We'll have to go back and look at it. But, boy, what a save from Michael Mueller. That wasn't where the wreck ended up even being. That was incredible. Incredible save right there from Michael Mueller. All right, well, let's go back and take a look at this. As you see, Jay Kixon has no choice but to tow it back to the pit. So we're going to go first here to the chopper view. I mean, I thought when he got to that point right there, and again, we'll show that again, but I thought he was going dead right back into the field. And somehow he holds on. But let's see how it first gets sparked up. So you saw Jared Bundy. He gets really, really tight right here. But that's not what causes the issue. Jeff Marble, he gets into the outside wall. Bounces off of it and just gets down into the right front of the 99 of Mueller. That sends Mueller headed towards the inside wall. But somehow, back to the right, locks it up. Car straightens itself out. That could be a candidate for a save of the season right there. He holds on. And then the trouble is actually going to start behind right here. As watch him come into frame here. It's going to be Jake Hickson. And 
and actually go to Jay Kixon right there. And Brandon Saylor, Team Marble Eye Racing versus Dynamic Auto Sports. And as they get into the corner here, Brandon Saylor starts creeping up a little bit. The 16's got to start his turn in. And I think that's just kind of a product of everybody being focused on the 99 and trying to get around it without issue. And once the 24 and the 16 get together, that sends Jay Kixon around up the track into the nine of Mark Sabak. They both get pretty hard into the outside wall. And the 16 comes to a sliding halt before he ultimately decides to tow it. Let's get another view of this save by Michael Mueller. Again, this was absolutely incredible. I want to go to the onboard view, I think, first before we go any further. And just watch the hand movement here to be able to keep this thing in check and hold on. Gets tagged. I mean, he's only got a split second to even decide what he wants to do. He can either lock it down and just try to minimize the damage of hitting the inside wall, or he do what he did, turn it back right, lock it down, and have easily the best save of the night, which is option he ended up going with, and the one that ultimately worked out the best. There's that contact, and boy, the 77 of Greg Bartlett just missed it, and then there's Mark Zabak, unfortunately not so lucky. That's a lot of damage to the back of Jay Kixon's number 16 Dark Horse Mustang. So with that immediate tow, it's going to probably bring his night to an end. Meanwhile, back up front, I think that's exactly what Jared Bundy wanted to see because now it sends us into overtime, and instead of trying to hold these guys off for four laps, it's only going to have to be two, which is still a plenty tough task in of itself, but I think he's again got a little bit better of a chance at it. Now, he did get really, really tight right there off of turn number two that time. And you wonder, is there anything he can maybe try to do different here? Because I think that if Fitzgerald holds even with him down the back, I just don't know if that three car is going to be able to hold on. You heard him say it, that if even if he loses one position, he's going to start falling like a brick. So Jared Bundy going to obviously stick to the inside here and see what he can do. Fitzgerald in second, and now... This is going to push Jeff Marble back to the third position. Not sure if he would prefer necessarily the inside or the outside, but nonetheless, Fitzgerald's still got to feel like he's in the catbird seat here with the freshest stuff in the best position in terms of guys that are on the freshest stuff. But Jared Bundy is going to try to hold on here. Should get the one to go signal this time. I'll remind you real quick of the overtime rules. we got three attempts total at it. Green-white checkered format, so these guys are going to take the green. And if they can make a lap around without wrecking, and we see that white flag, this race will be official. However, if they wreck on that first lap and we get a caution, we will rack them up and try it again. We can do that three times in total. I'll tell you what, one of the things, I know it's just a little bit of a random fact, but I love about Texas is the caution lights. I think they've got one of the coolest caution light setups on any of the tracks to go around the front grandstand catch fence. Certainly know when the caution's out, a lot easier and some of the other tracks. And just a cool little light display. And so Bundy on the inside, Fitzgerald on the outside. So lights go off. So we'll get ready to go back green. I always wondered how this stuff would shuffle up if we had the choose cone here in iRacing. I know it's not something we have yet, but, you know, maybe a year or so, a couple seasons down the road. If they added that, man, that would change so many factors. Now tonight, maybe not such a big deal. All things considered, I really neither lane has had a huge advantage on the restarts, at least from what we've seen. Now granted, you know, like I said, that could change depending on which track we go to or how the restart goes, but I definitely think a choose cone could make some things interesting. You wonder if maybe Jeff Marble would choose the outside again if he had the choice. Get behind Austin Fitzgerald, but you know, I think if you're Jeff here, your best bet is that the 19 and the 27 get a terrible restart. And if you're Austin Fitzgerald, you're hoping that everybody behind you gets a bad restart. It comes down to just you and the three car. Either way, it's going to come down to a good finish. Potentially one for the books here. If they can keep it clean all the way through, that is. All right, here we go. One more time at Texas. Pace car pulls off into the restart zone. Two lap sprint. Green flag back in the air. Good restart again from both guys on the front row. Jeff Marble, that's exactly what he wanted to see. He is going to get clear. He can jump outside or stick inside. 
Looks like he's going to stay to the inside for now. Jared Bundy, does he slip up? What does Jeff Marble do? Does he try to push the three clear? Doesn't have to. Jared Bundy gets clear to 74. Trying to slide up. Oh, wrecking hard out back. Huge, vicious crash for Roger Shelton and Wes Hurd Jr. Still wrecking. Now it's Sailor, Kenneth Bartholomew, multiple others. And the big one strikes in overtime one here at Texas. Glenn Grigsby's destroyed. Shelton is able to get back rolling, but he's only going to get rolling enough to get back to the pits. And now fifth caution of the night. As this will send us into a second overtime. The big change there looks like may have been, I think Jeff Marble may have gotten second from Austin Fitzgerald, which would be huge, of course, in terms of how it sets us up for this next restart. All right, well, you saw it started in the back before we even got out of turn two. So let's see exactly how it starts. Go to the chopper view and watch here on the inside. Looks like is there a little bit of a stack up here on the bottom. I think there is. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. Looks to me like Jacob Musso just kind of runs into the back here of Roger Shelton. Now, I know he was maybe expecting him to wash up trying to go to the inside, but... Does it look like Shelton does? And I mean, that's Shelton's position. Yeah, I mean, he can't, nothing Shelton can do there. He just gets kind of bullied, bullied around right there by Jacob Musso. Can I, I mean, I'm not really sure what Jacob was going for there. There wasn't a spot and I mean, bumping him doesn't do anybody any good. He's got a car in front, can't go anywhere. And when he gets into him here, hits him in the left rear, that's going to send the 42 pretty much instantly around. And then now here comes the 20 of Ryan Shiro with nowhere to go. Runs into the back. Tracy Powers just sneaks by, but here we go. Andrew Russo, Cody Matthews, nowhere to go. And then they start wrecking big. There's the huge hit for Shelton into the outside wall. Then Wes Hurd Jr. gets turned around. He takes a lick. The double zero. Quentin Clark, he's got nowhere to go. Give you a different angle here, this hit. Roger Shelton, look at this. Boom. Rips the front end and suspension out of that car. And the 12 of Wesser Jr. who also had nowhere to go. That wasn't it. They started wrecking even harder, I think, up front there. As you see, multiple cars scattering. Andrew Russo, Brandon Saylor. Take a different angle of this one here from TV2. And here was that secondary wreck between Brandon Saylor and a couple others. Oh, man. Kenneth Bartholomew got tagged late. There was nothing he could do right there. Was that... I think Rachel... She might have snuck through that, actually. We'll have to go back and look at that. But, yeah, I think Rachel Hunt may have snuck through that without at least at least getting too much damage. I couldn't tell. She might have got a little bit, but... But not as bad as it was for a lot of these people, I don't think, here. Is they're just all piling in. I mean, they've just got nowhere to go. Is Yeah, there you see up back, Rachel, she's checking up. And like she does indeed make it through all of this, so nicely done. All the chaos ensues in front. Get one more view of all of this here from the TV static cam. There's the first big shot. See it shaking the cam as well. And there's the second big one as well. We talked about not a lot of people making it through, but here was a view from someone that did. Rachel Hunt. Watch the job she does here. On the brakes immediately. Gets down low. Low, low, and then back to the middle. Sees them all wrecking in front. The 88 starts to slide back down. She goes back high. Just like that. Keeps the car clean. And she picks up quite a few track position spots for it. It's all the way up to 23rd. Nicely done, Rachel. All right, back up front. Jared Bundy sitting in that first position. But now the big change with that one is that Jeff Marble moves up to second. Austin Fitzgerald in third. Jeff Shutt in fourth. Tayo Polito fifth. Brian Conklin in sixth. Kyle Oakley, 7, Thomas O'Hara, 8, Tracy Powers, 9th, and Jacob Musso rounding out your top 10. So now it's not Fitzgerald starting on the outside, but Jared Bundy. Wonder how that's going to start to shake things up here a little bit. Let's see how Jeff is feeling here. For what's getting ready to be potentially the final overtime. Hey, Jeff, this is all stuff in the booth. Get a copy. Yes, sir. How are you? Good. Well, here we go, man. Setting ourselves up for overtime number two. You find yourself on the front row. Big change from that last restart where you were buried in the second row. How are you feeling about your chances right here to capture the first one of the season? 
Man, oh man, I did not need that yellow to come out this most recent green-white checker because I beat, I, I had them both beat off the corner, and I think I would have finished it. But bottom line here, I just need to have a good jump, good restart, uh, and just hope we make it out of two. <laughs> Sounds like a plan, but we'll let you get ready for it. Thanks for talking to us. We'll see if we're talking to you here in a couple laps. Uh, I hope so, man. I really do. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, you can definitely hear it in the voice there, Jeff Marble. He knows how big of an opportunity this one is. And he knows that if he can't take advantage right here, it could potentially spell disaster. And I think that maybe he gets even more worried here if we get another caution, because then that puts us in our final overtime. And all of a sudden, if it ends under caution, Jared Bundy, might get the win without even having to and try to make it all the way to the checkered here. So we'll have to see how it pans out, but it'll be another exciting one right here. Again, same rules apply as the last one. Got to make it at least a lap around under green for this race to be official. If we get a caution on that first lap, we'll rack them up and try it again. Going to bring up the cam here on the right side of Jeff Marble. And it's going to be watching him close. He's going to have a lot going on, as is everybody up here in the front here we go two laps to go overtime number two green, green flag. flag back in the air texas oh that time it was not the restart that jeff marble needed to get austin fitzgerald on the other hand gets a phenomenal restart he'll get clear and by plenty jeff's gonna try to hold even here with that third row the 19 of ty eopolito so far he's able to do so now he's got a bit of a run here we'll see if he takes it on austin fitzgerald down the back now to 74 looks for a block Nowhere to go there for Jeff Marble. Can they all hold it together here for a set of corners? Can Jared Bundy hold on? We are going to find out. Here we go. White flag in the air. One lap to go at Texas. Jared Bundy's going to have to hold on for all he's worth. Fitzgerald had as he set him up here through one and two. 74 is going to take a look to the outside. Does the three have enough to slide up off a of two? Looks like Bundy does. And now he's starting to pull a little bit of a gap. Jeff Marble's going to take a peek to the inside. The run is not there. Jared Bundy dives down into turn three for the final time. Out of four, the strategy pays off. Jared Bundy captures his first win of the season at Texas. What a job, what a call. And the SWM Motorsports drivers pulls off a victory that maybe a bunch of people didn't expect. The strategy call wins it, but man, he had to fight hard those last two laps. What a win by Jared Bundy. He's going to bring it around and celebrate as Fitzgerald and Jeff Marble round out your podium. That last restart, I think, is what did it for Jeff Marble. I just don't think he got the restart that obviously he wanted to get, and I think ultimately on top of that, just kind of ran out of time. But man, what a win for Jared Bundy. He's going to burn it down. He's going to celebrate as he should. That was about the best time you could get him in there in a race where maybe you felt like you didn't have the best car, but get some momentum anyway. And now we're going into Talladega next week. Anybody's got a shot there, so he could be very well looking at back-to-back. -back. Putting SWM Motorsports on the board. As he will complete his celebrations. We'll get ready to go get your top three. But before that, your finishing results here on the night. Bringing home the win again was Jared Bundy for SWM Motorsports. Austin Fitzgerald finishes in second. Jeff Marble third. Jeff Shutt in fourth. Ty E. Polito in fifth with Brian Conklin in sixth. Kyle Oakley seventh. Jacob Musso in eighth. Thomas O'Hara in ninth. And Cody Matthews rounding out your top ten. Tracy Powers finishes in 11th. Andrew Mraz in 12th. Michael Mueller in 13th. Tyler Marble 14th with Ryan Shiro in 15th. Greg Bartlett, 16th. Andrew Russo in 17th. Johnny McCulchuk finishes in 18th. Glenn Grigsby and Scott Glasso running out your top 20. Kenneth, excuse me, Kenneth Bartholomew in 21st. Rachel Hunt, good comeback for her. She finishes in 22nd. Wes Hurd Jr., 23rd. Brandon R. Saylor in 24th with Alan Bajari, 25th. Quentin Clark in 26th. Todd Shiro, 27th. Roger Shelton, 28th. Matthew Gearinger, 29th. And Mark Zabak rounding out your top 30. Jake Hickson finishes 31st. Danny Gutierrez in 32nd. 33rd, Christopher Hall. Jeffrey Souza in 34th. Troy Baker, 35th with Ryan Haynes in 36th. And Anthony Hanley rounds out your field tonight as he finishes in 37th. All right, well, we're going to go get your top three in here for interview. Stick with us. We will be right back at Texas.
All right, back live at Texas Motor Speedway. Going to start first tonight with your third place finisher, Jeff Marble. Jeff, this is also in the booth. Got a copy? Yes, sir. I'm here. Well, didn't quite work out the way it seemed like it was going to initially two weeks in a row. Now you come up just short. Break us down kind of what went wrong on that last restart. If there's anything you think you could have changed. Um, well, Austin, Austin snookered. When we had the really long run, Austin snookered me and snuck down pit road. Um, so I had no choice but to come down with one lap after him. And as we cycled through, obviously with him having fresher tires, he was ahead of me. Uh, and then, of course, Jared's there, too. He had pitted a couple laps prior to that, so he came out. So it was Austin and Jared both in front of me. And uh, Austin or uh, Jared was just getting them all sorts of hell. I'm like, well, we'll let these guys use up their tires, and I'll just sit here and ride. So I rode for a little bit, and then I started hunting them both down. And I really think if it would have stayed green, I might have had something for Austin. It would have been really tough to get by him because he was managing the center pretty good, and I was a tick free off of two. But, uh, yeah, just another untimely cautionary to kill that super long run. The driver that did it took full responsibility in the sim chat. He apologized to everybody. And, uh, yeah, okay, the green-white checkers. Um, I think it was the second one or the – I can't remember. The one where I, I had beat Jared and Austin off of two, and I'm like, oh, my God. It's like the C's just parted, and I'm like, I got these guys now, and then, bam, yellow come out, and – I think if that yellow didn't come out, I would have been sailing home. It sucks, man. I could have had Martinsville. Could have had this one. We'll uh, we'll just keep on trucking along and see if we can't get that first W. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, if you mine for gold long enough, you're bound to strike rich sooner or later. But man, oh man, another good run here to round things out tonight. Even if it doesn't feel like a victory, you ultimately end up third. So before we let you go, is there anyone you want to thank or shout out? First of all, first and foremost, I'd like to thank everybody in this league for putting on a phenomenal race. We had almost a full field, and to be able to put on a show like that, um, kudos to these guys. I, I appreciate each and every one of these guys in this league. I see other leagues that are just a giant mess uh, for us to have uh, green flag stops, strategies. Of course, got a little stupid at the end, but that's kind of be expected. Uh, we put on a better show than the real guys. That's for damn sure. They had guys self-spinning all over the place, so... Kudos to the I wrote driver in this league. The competition this year is completely off the charts. The field is wide ass open. Anybody can win this league, and that's how it's designed, and that's how we like it. And, um, no, yeah, Alloy Wheel Repair Specialist out of Richmond, Virginia. Ghost Racing Network, SimRacerHub.com, Butt Kicker, BMP, Bushnell Motorsports Park, Donnie Adams Act Design Studio, uh, Capital Auto Group, iRacingiFlag.com. Um, hope I didn't miss anybody. If I did, I apologize. And, of course, to you, Austin, up there in the broadcast booth. Week in, week out, I get nothing but compliments from everybody. You are your certified badass, sir. I well, certainly appreciate it. And thank you, of course, for talking to us. Again, congrats on the third-place finish, and we will see you next week. Thank you, sir. All right, and now that's going to bring us to your second place finisher, Austin Fitzgerald. Austin, you got a copy? Hey, Austin, what's up? Well, you bring home second, man. Just looked like maybe the car didn't quite have enough there at the end, but I mean, overall, seemed like you played strategy well. It puts you in the position at the end. Break us down what kind of led you to make that decision to pit one lap sooner than Jeff Marble and how you were able to try to hold on to it there at the end. Uh, you know what? I, I think if I, I push you a little bit more, I feel like I could have got by Jeff. Um, but as I was about to pass him, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I don't want to pass him and I could play a strategy game and just pit a lap sooner because fresh tires is worth like a second. So I figured, you know what? Maybe I'll just hold back here. I won't even attempt to pass. And uh, it worked out. It worked out perfect. And with my luck, I mean, we got that late caution and this car is dialed in to be, this is my tightest setup throughout this week. And it, it plows quite a bit um, in one and two. But then as, as everybody gets loose on the long run, the car really starts to come in. And that's why I was able to, you know, do so well in the long run. But because it's plowing tight um, through one, it would just snap loose off the exit of two. And that's why I just I couldn't, you know, make that pass, even though Jared Bundy had, you know, just two tires on the last pit stop. Yeah, he's able to roll that bottom side real well and in these tires and these cars when when you have a chance to cool down the tires over caution laps i mean it takes a while for them to heat up and you could almost run 
you know your fastest laps even on worn tires but i was hoping to get a longer green flag there green flag run but it kind of just turned into caution caution fest at the end there but that, that's kind of expected with everybody going for it well it's a great individual run by you tonight now i want to switch over a little bit to the team side Next week, we head to Talladega Super Speedway. We know that one of the rookies on your team, of course, got the win back at Daytona. How are you guys feeling about your chances as a team there next week? Uh, I am not a Super Speedway fan whatsoever, but um, I like him a little bit more now uh, with all these teammates. I mean, we did great at, obviously, great at Daytona, great at Atlanta. I think Jake won both of those. Uh and yeah, I, I don't see why we can't, you know, do something at Talladega. So, so yeah, I think it'll be a, a big team effort and hopefully we get some podiums. Absolutely. Well, thank you for talking to us. So before we let you head out, is there anyone you want to thank or shout out? As always, just a, a shout out to the team, Dynamic Auto Sports. Uh, shout out to my family and my two little girls, my wife. And uh, thank you, like always, for the great broadcast. It's, it's fun to go back and watch it. And uh Thank you to just everybody who shows up in this league uh, week in, week out. It's it's awesome having pretty much a full field, you know, and, you know, a lot of leagues, you know, they fade as the year goes on, but everybody seems pretty committed in this league, which makes it a lot funner to run, but a little nicer to watch too. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, congrats again on the second place finish, and we will see you next week. Yep. See you, Austin. All right. And now that brings us to your winner, first win of the season. For Jared Bundy, Jared, this is Austin in the booth. You got a copy? Yes, I do. Well, man, you did it. And the question, the first question is, how did you do it? Two tires versus four, and you held on. Yeah, just like I said in that prior interview, just keeping the clean air. That's, that's the most important thing. I know these guys behind me were, they were, they were hunting, but as, as soon as I got that clean air, I could put my car in front of whoever's in second, and it's just, they can't really do much, so. Especially with that short amount of time on a green white checkered, it's just it's clean air. That's all you need. Well, you fought through adversity and you found a way to get the job done tonight. And now that you got that first win out of the way at a track that maybe you weren't initially expecting it going in, how do you think this is going to kind of maybe swing the momentum in the right direction as we go forward into the next couple of weeks? Yeah, I'm hoping so. I uh, had a couple of uh, decent races uh, get swallowed away for one reason or another. You know, it's just been kind of up and down so far uh you know this win's going to put a lot of confidence in me and i'm hoping that this can be a start of a good run absolutely well it was a phenomenal run in of itself here tonight so before we let you head out to go celebrate is there anyone you want to thank or shout out all the guys at swm um they're awesome people man cody glenn kyle mark uh kenny uh, Chris, I know he drives trucks. Um, but I'm forgetting anybody. I'm sorry. I'm just, you know, still kind of jittery. So, you know, um, you know, I want to thank you for your broadcasts. They're awesome. I love watching them back, uh, for the high quality. And, uh, I want to thank Jeff and Tyler for putting the league on. This is one of the best leagues that I've been in, you know, in my short time on iRacing. So, you know, they do, a, they do a fantastic job. Absolutely, and thank you for talking to us. Well, again, congrats on the win, first one of the season, but I have a feeling it may not be the last. Thanks again for talking to us, and we will see you next week. Appreciate it, brother. All right, and that is just about going to wrap up our coverage here tonight, but, man, what a race it was. What a win it was for Jared Bundy. Boy, do we set ourselves up. For the biggest stage next week, fastest track in all of NASCAR Talladega Super Speedway. That's one that you are not going to want to miss out on. Make sure you tune in. Same time, same network for the same league. The Fast Track Sim Racing Cup Series, that is. But until then, as always, I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you so much for coming out. That'll do it for me, Austin Green, here on Ghost Racing Network. Until next time, have a good night.